So it's, it's quite interesting, in fact, that at the same time that we do DC circuits here at TAFE, uh, in this particular course, we've been doing soldering, and in the soldering subject, the students have been working with both surface mount LEDs and conventional through-hole LEDs. And um, Nick has taken that concept to a, a whole new level by uh, harvesting some of those LEDs from unused toys that he had at home and putting them into some wires and then putting them into the circuit. So maybe uh, Nick can go ahead and show us uh, how these LEDs are actually used in the circuit. For sure. So um, the only issue with the LEDs, obviously, and Greg will um, be uh, a bit better position to explain this a bit further, but resistance does change uh, depending on what voltage is going through these LEDs. So your calculations will be out, but that's not the purpose here. The purpose of the LEDs is to give a... Uh, a bit of a visual representation of what exactly is going on in this circuit and then what effect uh, different things like shorting at different points and opening uh, circuits at different or opening branches at uh, different points what effect that has on the circuit because that will actually uh, make certain LEDs brighter certain LEDs stop working altogether uh, certain LEDs dimmer um, yeah it's it's just a great way of, of um, making it uh, leap off the page and give you an indication exactly what's going on. So um, I've replaced the 1000 ohm resistor and the uh, 680 ohm resistor with a uh, green and a red LED. Uh, you should be able to see the green from where uh, I'm sitting here. The red is actually on, uh, only very, very uh, faintly. So it's, obviously- It's on, I can vouch for that. I can yeah, see it's on, yes. Yeah, so obviously we, we can sort of gather from that that obviously quite a lot more current is heading down this particular branch as opposed to this one and obviously that would be purely because there's so much more resistance in this branch especially since it's in a um, uh, it's in parallel with the 560 as well um, but using our shorting wire we can start to do some um, some fun things and, and try to think to ourselves how can we make this uh, red LED uh, glow brighter well we can certainly take uh, some resistance out of the circuit leading up to the 680. So, for example, we can uh, take the uh, we can uh, skip the 270 and even skip this one that I have in line with the 680 as well, and attach it here. Oh, I love it! Yeah, so you can see that immediately comes on. And I don't know if you caught that before, but the green LED just ever so uh, ever so slightly actually goes a little bit dimmer there as well. So obviously we can gather from that that hang on uh, some that was originally going through that green before we shorted is now found a, a lower resistance course and is now heading through here making the red really pop um, so yeah and uh, obviously we can even you know go a, a step further there as well we can uh, we can open circuit open circuit the 1000 ohm resistor there as well and I don't know if you caught that, but that actually made the red LED glow brighter again. Because all the current's going through exactly, that Exactly, that's yeah. right. So if we just touch that on there, you, you might just see that there. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. But as, uh, as we take the green LED away, the red LED becomes brighter again. So, um, yeah, it's... Um, it, it, I just found it to be a, just a, a great tool to really get my head around exactly what's going on in this circuit and what effect... Um, yeah, short circuiting, open circuiting uh, has on uh, a series parallel circuit like this um, because uh, it, it's just a, it's a great tool especially when you're starting out to really um, understand the, the concept and, and really get a firm grasp of the uh, the fundamentals yeah yeah uh, Nick can you make some comment maybe what difference is it between doing this as an assignment at home compared to not doing it? Well, if you don't do the assignment, I find that it, um, it's a bit sterile. You're just working with a lot of numbers, a lot of fractions and calculations, mm -hmm. which is all well and good if, uh, if you really understand what's going on. But when you're starting out, I think it really uh, bodes well to, to take the time, maybe just take um, a couple of afternoons every Saturday or Sunday, uh, hunker down and put this together. It, it's not not expensive. Um, you know, the, the board was just an off-cutter board I had at home. Um, the resistors, uh, 
what, five dollars for a pack of a couple of hundred resistors. Yep. The LEDs came out of a couple of kids' toys I was going to chuck away, just through those. Um, the only things that really sort of cost anything, the battery I had lying around, everyone's got a few of those in their um, cupboard, um, was the, the bolts, the wing nuts, and the eyelets on the end of the uh, the wires there as well. The wire was just spare wire. That's, so. that's, that's a big difference compared to the original design, which was called for, which had just... Uh, some ordinary uh, wood screws put into it and then small wires wrapped around each wood screw. So yep. Nick's really gone above and beyond yep. in uh, building this project up. And it's uh, look, and don't get me wrong, this is not essential. Um, you don't need to perhaps go to this sort of effort. Even something like just twisting the wires uh, like, like Greg has uh, done with the, with the smaller um, uh, example there as well, at least allows you to get the multimeter out, have a, it, it also familiarizes yourself with the multimeter as well. You learn, hang on, voltmeters in parallel, uh, amp meters in series. Um, all of these things you, you need to get a firm grasp on um, early on in the piece um, so you can really uh, sink your teeth into it. Yeah. Just looking at your circuit there now, and we might, we might turn that off before we do flatten the battery, but it would be interesting even, and you might have done this Nick, yep. to get the voltmeter and put it across the battery terminals with the LEDs on, and I guarantee that you'll no longer have 9 volts there because yeah. you're pulling quite a bit of current. Exactly, no, that's right. And, and I mean, that, that's the great thing about this. Um, you can uh, you know, d certainly get um, uh, more jumpers there as well. I've even got a uh, a small alligator jumper with another additional white LED there as well so you can start to have all sorts of fun things where you can start to just try to test yourself and go hang on I want to make that green LED brighter I want to make it dimmer where can I put this to make that happen um, or where can I short or where can I open and um, when you start testing yourself like that and you start you know getting those answers right everything will start to fall into place when you come into uh, to TAFE and um, it all starts to make sense when it's up on the board. You don't yeah. lose your train of thought. It's interesting to know. Oh <laughs> These things happen. <laughs> it's interesting to note too that uh, when I first put this project together some months ago, uh, I did not have a resistor for this 330 ohm, uh, which was required in the circuit. And I had to put two resistors in parallel. And I noticed here, uh, Nick, in the same branch of the circuit, but in fact, two resistors in series to make up the 150 ohm. Yeah, try as I might, I just could not find that 150. So um, I'm trying to think what it, I mean, look, if I took the time to look, read the color band, is I could work it out, but I believe it was uh, something like a, uh, a 150 ohm resistor or thereabouts, added those together in series, got the 150 we needed. Yeah. It would have been. You probably got a 47 ohm and a 100 ohm or yep. maybe two 75 ohm resistors there yep. to get the 150 ohms. And that's brilliant. So. Uh, summary then, a wrap up for this, it's well worthwhile? 100%. It's, it's not expensive, um, you know, the, the, the smaller version, I think you could um, uh, put that all together with a bit of scrap wood. Um, most people have various sort of screws and bits of wire laying around at home. That whole thing would be about $15 and under. This with a, a little bit extra nuts and bolts, $25 and under. Um, but it's yeah, it's invaluable uh, because um, this sort of work, electronics or electrical, whatever field you need to get into, um, it's not all theory. Uh, theory is obviously a big component of it, but um, there is a, a lot of hands-on work in, and I think you need to get comfortable working with your hands, putting together circuits and um, understanding exactly what you're doing. Yeah. That word, I love that word, understanding. It's all right knowing how to do it, knowing where to put the wires, but understanding why things are happening in circuit yep. is very important. Nick, you bought a multimeter. You had a choice of different multimeters to buy and you probably didn't buy the most expensive, you yep. didn't buy the cheapest one. Yep. What advantage is there in buying your own multimeter? You're more familiar with it. Um, obviously, when you're playing with this circuit, you'll probably blow a couple of fuses uh, starting out. We all do. That's why they usually come with yep. a couple of spares. Um, but it's just becoming more familiar with it because um, part of this course, obviously, um, you will be uh, needing a, an amp meter and a volt meter for quite a few practical tests. And if you're familiar with your own meter, 
when you're coming in uh, to, to do the test on that particular morning, that's one aspect you don't have to worry about. Some alien meter that you've never used and you don't know how it all works. You just you go exactly. in there, that's my meter, I know how to use it. Um, it's yeah. something I've come to trust and rely on. Yep. I know exactly how it works. Yep, I, I, I love it, yeah. Yep. Uh, so Nick, I really want to thank you for coming in and uh, bringing your project into TAFE. Uh, once again, I mean, the project was already marked and assessed and it's been a great asset for both the class and for Nick. But I want to thank Nick for coming in today and helping to make this video. Um, thanks, Nick. Not a problem, Greg. Okay, so Greg Moore and Nick for TAFE signing off. Cheers.